a loser, unsustainable internet companies. Wayfair, Blue Apron, and Birchbox are the latest that have no sustainable strategy. These pure players are getting Amazon-like valuations without a critical component. That is, a business that works or some sort of moat that makes their company scalable. For example, warehouses within 20 miles of 45% of the population, or an incredibly robust loyalty program with 58% of American households. Yes, we're talking about Prime. Wayfair is on track to double William Sonoma's e-commerce sales by 2019. Selling low-priced items, they're competing with Amazon, which bids on 43,000 of the same keywords. However, Amazon's cash won't run out. Meanwhile, Wayfair spending is unsustainable. The company currently has more liabilities than assets. In exchange for that massive spend, it's garnered no customer loyalty. Even though the company spent $72 million on TV ads in 2016 and is slated to spend $90 million this year. Just 9% of search traffic comes from the master brand term, compared to 30 to 50% for Williams Sonoma brands. And they're losing 60% of their customer base each year. By the way, the best proxy for brand equity, look at the percentage of traffic garnered from key term brand searches. Millwood Brown and Ipsos, those businesses are going away. Blue Apron has a similar story. In Q1, they lost $52 million on revenue of $245 million. The company has enormous acquisition costs. It spent $460 for each new customer in 2016. Despite all those new users, Blue Apron's revenue growth has been flat since Q1 of 2015. Their IPO down round was likely the nail in the coffin. What Wall Street doesn't get, paying high cost of customer acquisition and investing insane amounts in fulfillment doesn't work when you have 60% customer churn. At some point, like we saw with flash sites, there will be a major correction in the marketplace. My advice to these companies, while the market is drunk and asleep, grab its wallet and buy a real business as it will wake up and it will be sober and irritable. A continued loser, the brand industrial complex. A new startup, Brandless, competes with Amazon by borrowing another of the Seattle Giants' strategies, private label, or more accurately, no label. But then again, if Brandless becomes popular, isn't Brandless a brand? <sighs> Mind blown. Brandless sells generic household items from toothpaste to olive oil for just $3, yet another signal of the death of the industrial brand complex and is indicative of what is happening in the larger consumer economy. Normally, during a recession, private label brands take a larger share of CPG sales as people are trying to save money and don't want to pay more for the better-known brand. During the recovery, however, big CPG brands are able to use the normal levers of traditional advertising, end caps, etc., to convince consumers to pay up for the premium brand. But things are different now. There's been a structural shift, and despite a recovery in the economy, private label sales continue to grow. We have entered a new era. The sun has passed midday on brand building. A loser, the smartphone generation. Three in four American teens now owns an iPhone. The impact? It's making them more lonely. The data is clear. Since the release of the iPhone, the world has changed for American teens. Among other things, just 56% of high school seniors in 2015 went on dates, in contrast to 85% of boomers and Gen Xers. To be fair, it's not all bad news. Teens may be replacing drugs with their iPhones. Usage of illicit drugs other than weed has fallen among 8th, 10th, and 12th graders to its lowest point in 40 years. So teens are lonely, single, and addicted to their smartphones, but not doing drugs. Progress? Maybe. My sons are getting their first smartphones, and I told them they could have any ringtone as long as it was the sound of a tree falling in the forest or one hand clapping. In addition, my smartphone is broken. Every time I use the home button, I find I'm still with people I hate. We'll see you next week.